Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another faction preview video for the Fates Divided DLC. And today we're taking a look at Gongdu, who is starting as the only Yellow Turban member left in the 200 start. And this is actually quite interesting. Now you do need to have the Yellow Turban DLC, the one that was launched as part of the uh, pre-release for the base game, where you could have gotten it as a pre-purchase, uh, pre pre-water bonus, right, pre-purchase, uh, pre-water bonus for the base game. Or you could have gotten it a bit after, uh, but it's a nice DLC that added Huang Shao, He Yi, and Gong Du in the base game, and they're now playable in other time slots as well. He Yi is playable in 194 uh, after this patch, and Gong Du is playable on 200. Now these two changes are actually very historically accurate. Uh, the location of Gong Du in 190, which is all the way out in the Shuba region, uh, was very inaccurate. Uh, he did represent a yellow turban force there. There were yellow turbans in the Yi province. They were actually quite strong, but it was not led by Gong Du. Gong du doesn't enter the history books until around this time during the Battle of Guan du, where he and Liu Pi were these yellow turban remnants that started to rebel in Runan uh, behind Cao Cao's rear. And Yuan Shao rallied with them and asked Liu Bei, who was already destroyed at that time. Remember we mentioned that Liu Bei only lasted about a month here. And Liu Bei was sent to partner with them to resist in this area. And in the beginning, uh, they failed once when they were put down by uh, Cao Ren. And then the second time they tried, um, Liu Bei came here planning to escape to Liu Biao. But at least during the second time, Cao Cao sent Cai Yang down here to take care of Wu Nan, and they managed to kill Cai Yang. And then they decided to pack it up and head down to join Liu Biao as they are abandoning Yuan Shao following his defeat at the Battle of uh, Guandu. So Gong Du is historical and he goes on to work under Liu Bei. There is no more historical record of him after this event. So basically he was co-leader of the Old Turbans here and then he joined Liu Bei. And that was it from a historical perspective. But he does leave a small mark in Romance of the Three Kingdom, when it was described that he would be helping Liu Bei escape during the Changban escape as Cao Cao was pressing down right before the Battle of Chibi. And during that escape attempt, uh, when Liu Bei was being chased out, Gong Du got killed by Xia Hou Yuan. Now this is entirely, you know, fictional. It's just to give him a closure in the romance story. Historically, we don't know what happened to him. I don't think he became, you know, a prized general, uh, maybe a captain, maybe a lieutenant, and just didn't leave a mark. Or perhaps during that escape attempt, you know, a lot of people did die. So maybe he died and just didn't leave a mark uh, in the history books. So regardless, this is a very historically accurate start for him, which is nice. Uh, as a faction, the three yellow turbans from that yellow turban DLC plays quite differently from every other faction in the game. They have a unique reform tree. They technically don't have any unique units since you can get all three from the reform tree, but you just start out with one already given to you. And the one that's given to uh, Gong Du here is this Guardian of the Land. It's a heavy assault infantry, a D unit. It's okay. Uh, it has the flaws of a lot of other, you know, D units, aka no shield. Um, it's not a death sentence because you could overwhelm people uh, with sheer number of infantry and actually one of my favorite strategies with old turbans is actually to rush peasants and just overwhelm people with number of units with good base attack damage uh, but that's a different story he does have a unique building in the guerrilla warfare building that gives you extra post battle loot income and some extra military supplies and uh, he can has a special stance where he can stand there in enemy commanderies, steal their food and reserves from local regions uh, causes public order issues for them as well it's Interesting. I mean, it's like the bandit raid uh, without the loot mechanic uh, to help boost your income. It's mainly uh, to decrease the enemy public order. It feels like you might be in a survival situation early on, but Cao Cao really doesn't have the energy for you. You have Xia Hou Yuan's army, the historical general, not the historical general, the romance general who kills him in the novel uh, outside your gates, and you have to fight him off early on. So that's a nice touch that they sent Xia Hou Yuan down here to do that, uh, to give Gong Du some closure because I don't think we're seeing him in any later starts. Uh, he doesn't have any of his old um, comrades. You know, historically at this time, 
He Yi and Huang Shao has been beaten by Cao Cao and executed by him. And Zhang Kai technically was working for Yuan Shu, so we can only assume he also died. As for He Man, He Man died fighting with He Yi. And who else is under them? Pei Yuan Shao. Pei Yuan Shao died quite early. Pei Yuan Shao was a fictional character that was written in for the original Rebellion. I don't know how he ended up as part of the Remnant group in 190. Uh, most of the Remnant group are very, you know, loosely connected um, and uh, not very heavily mentioned because they are just, you know, kind of background for the Three Kingdom period. Because once the initial one failed, all the Remnant ones, aside from the Qingzhou group that chased out Kong Rong twice and later on joined Cao Cao, uh, no one else really made much of a splash. So with that said, uh, we're going to jump into game and check out how Gongdu plays in this start. Jiangjun,黄金大业已至危急存亡之时,普天之下,只有您仍在为黄天奋战不息。将军之手足皆为曹操所害,其余命丧其手者更是不计其数,此人必受天罚。您正是将此天罚之人。曹操此时正与袁绍鏖战于北方，不得脱身。若能与刘备合兵一处，便可攻其不备，重新收复失地。将军，方今之时，唯有此计可克敌制胜，切不可让我等。Alrighty, so that was a pretty accurate flyby with the fact that our brothers are all killed by Cao Cao. Uh, both He Yi's force and Huang Shao's force were killed by him. And we're left alone as the last remnants of the Yellow Turbans. We don't have any missions in this start date, similar to uh, Liu Bao's faction and Zhang Yan's faction, uh, which is a bit of a shame, but I fully understand they were fully crunched on time and they just ended up, you know, unlocking these factions for different DLC starts and didn't really plan out any missions for them. Maybe these will get changed in the future, but maybe not since they're not really the main stars of these period. Uh, the only faction which I think you could probably argue for some missions is Liu Biao, because he was still quite big and relevant during this period, even though he stayed largely inactive um, during the Battle of Guandu. Now the days of Noble Rebellion may be fading. Gongdu, yet the war is far from over. You have aligned yourself with Yuan Shao and Liu Bei against Cao Cao, but the situation is grim. Without a wise strategy, you are unlikely to survive. To the south, Liu Bei maintains a strong presence. Your first goal should be to survive against this rising power. Look for friends if you can. The yellow turbans are all but gone, so you will need to form new bonds. Hold fast, Gongdu and pray that your noble goals survive in an ignoble time. So, I wonder if that means we have more diplomacy options unlocked for us, because we are in an alliance at the start, which is quite interesting. Uh, you can reach this type of, you know, alliance capability if you go late enough in the Yellow Turban campaign. Once you become ascended, I believe, for faction rank, you could work on alliances. Right, but as you can see, we're not there yet. This is just pre-assigned to us. We have no real, you know, diplomatic options with other factions on the map. We can become a vassal of Liu Bao. That is actually interesting. That could be a surprising way out of a lot of tough situations. Okay, we can support independence. We can or coordinate with our allies. Okay, that is probably the only thing we can do. Right. And we can negotiate peace. But uh, of course, that's not even possible. N no side want that. And uh, if we look at our starting situation, 2,000 income, 1,395. Most of the breakdown comes from family estate. We do have none, which is not terrible. For yellow turbans, the income of industry is very valuable. So having an iron mine is pretty good. Uh, we have the same building tree as the Han buildings. Um, the settlement building tree is very different. Uh, namely, the forge is an excellent building for the yellow turbans. Not only does it give base industry, it gives percentage industry as well as replenishment, which are all very useful. 
you don't have private workshop anymore, but you do have the artisan, which will once again boost base. And uh, manufacturing is the same as state workshop, also boosts base industry. So you can get really high industry values, right? As you can imagine, it's a thousand from the county plus the manufacturing. Artisan gives you another 250. We're at 1,250. Uh, Ford gives you another easy 160. So that's around 1,410. And then for multipliers, you just want a lot of generals. For yellow turbines, the general with their skill tree have factual wide boost to various income. Uh, so you can see here this recovery skill or tranquility gives you 3% to peasantry. There is one for industry and there's one for uh, commerce, depending on the class of your character, whether they're a healer, veteran, or um, a scholar. Scholars are the best. Uh, most of the scholar skills, the Tian skills, you can see the little Chinese character on these uh, skills. This is Tian. These are exclusive to scholars. Now you can also tell by the color of the stats they add. So here you get expertise and authority in case you don't read Chinese, uh, totally understandable. Uh, but you can tell by the color they're exclusive to scholars and they give decent research rate for getting faster reforms. And most of these have some sort of income, 6% commerce factor wide, just by having the character with this skill unlocked. So a large roster is a must for Yellow Turbans to do well. And you can snowball, you know, incomes off the charts just by hosting a large roster. And you can increase roster sizes, I believe, only through, I don't know, do you get the recruitment? Yes, you do. You get the track talent assignment. So you can use this to seek... Uh, new characters, which is a good way to uh, use your characters for that purpose. So you don't really want to fire anyone. You want to keep people happy. It might be a little bit difficult to keep people happy because you don't have a lot of the Hun mechanic. So you don't have Imper mechanic, for example. You don't have the prestige point level up mechanic and you don't have the title mechanic. So you're going to rely on items and just keeping generals on the field sometimes to keep them happy. And if we look at the prestige rank, one thing you have to know is that the new prestige point, the ones where you can assign and customize your faction in the patch, is only for Han factions. So someone like Gongdu, all your increased bonuses are still labeled. You see how many armies you get, you see how many assignments you get, these are preset. Uh, but you can also see that starting at next tier, characters do not have desire for high. I think actually, I think that's always here. Right, starting a balance. So our, currently we have this as well. And then here we keep that and then we get increased diplomatic. That's really not going to help. 4% uh, punishment is going to help. We can now make peace with regular factions. We can't even peace out before healed. And then you can make trades once you get to empowered. So it's a very limited experience for yellow turbans. Um, discount to captain revenues. Interesting, actually. Do we have access to captain revenues? <laughs> We would have to check through a replace function. Right. We do have access to captains. Unfortunately, they don't get the fancy upgrades like Yuan Shao's captains. So, probably going to pass on these. Um, I think my favorite strategy wheel turbines I mentioned earlier is just to spam units such as this, People's Warband, for this version of Yellow Turbans. The other version is the Mandate of Heaven version. Uh, mainly because, look at their stats. They have really high damage. 50 base, 12 uh, armor piercing. That's actually really high, even if you consider enemy with, you know, 50% armor, which would be a heavy infantry or heavy unit. Even then, you're doing 25, 12, right? So 35 damage, 37 damage at 30 attack speed. Whereas if you recruit, you know, spear units with uh, this combination here, you get 38 damage, right? A 50% armor, assuming they're hitting the same unit, at 13 attack speed. So you can imagine how much more, you know, DPS you get out of this unit uh, compared to some of your other choices. Now, of course, you might think they're more expensive than these, sure, right? Peasant Spearmen are not the most expensive unit, but even if you upgrade the unit, the weapon damage doesn't increase. Right? Even if you get to this point, the weapon damage actually decreases. Right, you go from a spear to a Z. Oh, this is also a spear, but one-handed use of a spear. So this is like 27 damage, 28 damage at 20 attack speed versus what you could do with this people's warband and just recruit a ton of them 
because you want to keep a ton of generals anyways and just rush down enemy armies. It's highly effective. If you don't believe me, check out our Zhang Jiao campaign. It was a lot of fun throwing about a thousand peasants at Lu Bu before we got him killed. And uh, you want to obviously maximize your replenishment rate and you have access to that with easy building such as the forge which is both good for economy and for replenishment. So that's kind of your early game scenario here. See this is correct, the abandoned factions won't let you research your first reform, but here you can do it on turn 1 which is nice. And what else is nice is that here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 reforms given to you already. And that is absolutely amazing because if you look at it, these take 4 turns, these take 5 turns, these take um, 9 turns. And technically we only skipped 50 turns ahead and somehow we got so much more worth in terms of reform. And we have some good ones. Siege weapon right here. We also have redeployment discount here. That's a key reform for playing uh, this version of Yellow Turbans. And you have some nice units unlocked already. The ones I probably recommend you to take early on for this situation is probably this uh, for the building upgrades. For the level 4, uh, this will be the manufacturing building. This will be the artisan building. Base, uh, artis opposite, artisan manufacturing. Uh, you need that for the level 4 and then here you need that for level 5. These are locked because you haven't ascended to the next faction uh, rank, which is healed. And if you remember, we're actually only one point away from healed. And another reason why you want to spam characters in the game is because each skill gives you enlightenment. So technically the more character you have, even if you recruit a new character who's level 1, they will always have two skills at minimum. That's four points of enlightenment. So having just a large roster of characters will give you more points. So all we really need to do for the first rank up is fight the army in front of us. We outnumber Sahoya, I believe. I actually don't know if you can reach him on turn one. You can't, but you probably want to ambush here. You can definitely beat this. Uh, just have one of your generals get a lot of kills. He might be a great choice. You have a good skill in knowledge of the mind to not only splash damage, but also demoralize the enemy. It's very strong. 50 points of morale hits, very strong. And uh, have him level up. You know, 3,000 is actually a dual worth. I don't know if we have weapons. Yeah, we don't have any good weapons to fight him. That really depends on what you draw here uh, randomly on turn one. But Xiao Yuan doesn't have a good weapon either. You know, a bronze weapon is not that great. And we have a bunch of skills that you can stack. That's another thing that's strong about Yellow Turbans. Uh, you can boost nearby allies. And um, oh, this is... This is for, yeah, this is boost for nearby allies where you can increase their damage. So there's ways for you to, um, you know, make one of them get the kill. Oh, even him, Inner Fire, if he has a weapon, this would be amazing. You know, similar to a Sentinel with Zeal, uh, that type of usage. Bring him down, get your guy leveled up, get the faction rank up on turn two, I guess. And then, you know, go from there. You'll be able to replenish nicely, build out your city. As I mentioned, the reason why we go for those reform is to get more money from industry. And uh, you could combo that with commerce if you want, because this building gives public order as well as faction-wide satisfaction. This is how you keep these guys happy when you don't have tools like titles and uh, you know other mechanics like the emperor that can give satisfaction faction-wide. This communal in everywhere. So the base build, you know, for Yellow Turbans would just be Camino Inn, Artisan, Manufacturing, Forge, and you're good. And if you want to go tall, your faction unique building is not bad. Uh, if you want to make most of your income into post-battle loot, which, you know, it's not a bad idea if you get out and fight a lot. Uh, or else you could probably go um, into farming a little bit. You do need to secure some food. The peasantry base income is not bad and you get a decent amount of food. I believe the grain storage also gives income for yellow turbans. Yep, this is the most useful grain storage in the game. So depending on what counties you have, you can definitely plan out how you want to diversify your income. You could also give up on diversifying because you notice you don't have really multiplier buildings. Like even this is 30% multiplier to peasantry. It's not worth building. So what you want to do is just spam all base income buildings. So you have base income from all sources in your commanderies and then just rely on your generals to boost them and that's a pretty easy game for yellow turbans they're actually incredibly strong in the late game once you get the snowball going early games usually when they struggle a little bit uh, but i don't think the early game here is that difficult now of course 
things can change if Liu Bao turns on you. Because I expect you have to do a lot of fighting early on. Uh, Nanyang would be a good place to take. Uh, pretty much synergizes anything that synergizes with Forge, right? Jade, Toolmaker in Xiangyang, the Iron Mine in Runan. You can just build it out from here and, uh, you know, sustain yourself. Maybe work your way to some sort of um, defensive setup here with Cao Cao's forces. I don't know what you would have to take. I also wonder what happens when you take the Emperor. That is something for you guys to experiment for those of you who like to play Yellow Turbans. I know there's quite a few of you actually. And uh, try out this new start. And another exciting start for the Yellow Turbans would be He Yi in 194, which is also going to be made available following this patch. So that's it for Gongdu's preview. Hope you guys enjoy this, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!